Hello again and welcome to another 140k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Nick Lennon for sending in some very awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard artillery group in action. Uh, I think this is just such a cool army and it's one that I really actually want to... Uh, I actually want to put together and run myself now after running uh, some infantry unsupported by heavy weapons recently. I'm really starting to get the feel for running a good old fashioned artillery company. I only have a couple of basilisks myself, a couple of basilisks uh, and a couple of manticores and an old griffin. But uh, I think Nick has got the uh, some got the right idea about running an artillery company. Look at all those basilisks. I mean, manticores are cool, don't get me wrong, but something about the basilisk, something about the earth shaker cannon that just... It's just iconic. It just looks fantastic. So thank you for sending this picture to Nick. I really, really love the army. I really love the detailing on like the muddy tracks and all that kind of good stuff. It just looks really, really cool. It's a beautiful sight to behold. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or you can email them to me and there'll be a link and an email address down in the description below. Without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Now, Nick's pictures here have inspired me for today's video, and I'm going to be just throwing around some ideas and some general concepts for running an artillery company in 9th edition. There's a few things that we want to take into account. Uh, I have some experience with running artillery. Uh, I have tried running games where I've run a pair of basilisks and run a pair of manticores. Uh, and it does, it, it's not obviously the extent of what we can see here, but it has given me a little bit of experience of, okay, what, you know, what is, what are sort of the key things to bear in mind if you're thinking of putting together an army like this. Now we're going to be approaching this from a competitive standpoint, and it's probably important to take into account that we're going to be looking at this from maybe a, a terrain heavy perspective, because a lot of the UK tournament scenes uh, use a lot of terrain, but also in the American scene, uh, is there's a big emphasis on like player place terrain at the moment, uh, and that can lead to you actually being able to block off line of sight to a lot of the board. And even if it's not blocked off, you can certainly um, you can certainly get yourself some dense cover if you need it. And so what I tend to find is that you, and especially when I was been running like my my tank guard as well, obviously I've got to learn how to hide tanks. And when I've been running my um, Scions as well, going to be able to hide all those DACA Primes and whatnot. What I've kind of learned from, I would say, the last uh, sort of last sort of 12 months of playing and using various different guard armies and how I could apply it to an artillery company is you really, really want to take advantage of the fact, and it's going to sound obvious, but bear with me, you're really going to want to take advantage of the fact that you want to be able to shoot the enemy without them being able to shoot you. Because, um, you know, manticores are quite tough, but basilisks are only like toughness six. So they are relatively fragile. And if someone is wants to, you know, kill a basilisk, they, 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 you know, they will do if you let them draw a line of sight to it. So that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to take into account. Do you, you know, how many basilisks can you, or, or manticores, or wyverns, or mortar teams, or thud guns, or heavy mortars, or whatever you're looking at, how many of them can you realistically hide in your deployment zone? And I think realistically, you can probably hide between, I think you probably hide about six vehicles in your deployment zone. And I know this because when I've been running my six guard vehicles, that's how many I've been able to you know, just about hide. Now bear in mind, Lean must have got sponsors, so you could possibly maybe squeeze, you know, I, think you could, I think you could do a comfortable six if you're running artillery because you know obviously you can cram it into smaller places um so i'd say you can comfortably hide about six vehicles uh artillery vehicles and you know you'd probably be able to take advantage of the lower profile of, like mortar teams and whatnot to hide them as well i think after that what you're going to find is you're going to be putting things out uh, out out in the open or at the very best you'll be able to get them shooting through some dense terrain so if you were to go like full artillery, all in, uh, then probably what you'd want is to, your basilisks are a little bit more fragile, so you'd probably want to have them properly hidden out of line of sight, and then maybe have your manticores um, sort of going through dense, because they're a little tougher, they've got the they've got the uh, the extra toughness. However, your manticores are likely to be your full payload, 
So you'd want to take that into account. Maybe if you're running, you know, um, three manticles and one of them isn't full power, that's the one you can be like, well, maybe that I'm not too bothered if that one gets blown up or, or not. So that's just something that you might want to sort of bear in mind. Um, so that's the first thing. How many how many vehicles can you hide that can shoot at the enemy with impunity? Because being able to shoot at the enemy with impunity is really, really powerful. And the fact that guard now get, get the best indirect, and the fact that now other people's indirect fire is going to be either A, not as, not as good, because you'll be getting like extra cover and extra, and there'll be a less ballistic skill than you will. Uh, but also, not only will it be not as good, you're much less likely to to, uh, to come across it. You know, so often where before the balance data sheet, one of the key things I had to do with my full payload manticles is win the artillery duel. And sometimes it would take me until like turn three to win that artillery duel, and then I'd have a couple, you know, like I'd have like one or two turns left of my manticores in order to be able to get four shots but one or two turns to be able to use them where i really wanted to use them if my opponent was using his own artillery maybe his own manticores maybe some tau sms maybe some uh, hive guard and whatnot but now out of line of sight shooting isn't really as prevalent so you're, the stuff that you will come across you should be able to flatten quite quickly and the, if you come across anything at all. The other advantage of having, uh, that we've sort of got at the moment, is that uh, there are units like the, uh, for example, the Elder Swooping Hawks we faced recently, which they come down, shoot something, and then immediately redeploy. Now they don't go off the board, they have to go somewhere on the board. So often, they'll go somewhere where you can't really interact with them. But if you've got a Wyvern, then you can interact with them. Wyvern will have a great time, or Mortars. Mortar teams will have a great time shooting at some uh, Sweeping Hawks because all of those Mortars will get an individual, you know, they're, they're taking the spots of 10, you see. So each one of those Mortars is going to get a minimum of three shots. You get some Cadian rerolls in there uh, to hit, and you're looking at some pretty tasty, you know, plus one to hit from uh, from Concentrated Barrage, from the uh, from Psychic Awakening, and you're starting to start, you're starting to interact with those swooping hawks that really don't want to be interacted with and there's other units out there which can do similar things as well you know all those units that are so are so bloody jump shoot jumping and stuff like that jumping out shooting and jumping back why are they so powerful because you can't interact with them well guess what you can interact with them that's the really the advantage of artillery over um over like leaving russes and stuff like that now that's just something, that, that's sort of a couple of little tangent points I wanted to bring up. A few other things you're going to want to take into account when you're running a list like this. Uh, and this is, this, I would say, is you need to get, a, it's really important to get the balance between, I'd almost say, guns and screening. More so than any other, any other type of army out there. Because if you take lots and lots and lots of guns, you don't have enough screening, you don't have enough men to stop the enemy from tying up all your artillery and everything, then you're going to have a really, really bad time. You're not going to be able to interact with, uh, with the enemy because all your artillery is going to be tied up because you only brought 60 infantry. It's not enough really, is it? You're going to want at least like 120 infantry to, to screen. So that's just something, that's what I found from my, for my, for my, days of running my hybrid cadence where I had tanks, artillery, and I had infantry. I found that I needed 120 infantry, which was just enough to be able to screen out the enemy for multiple turns and screen out deep strikers and stuff like that. Now, one other thing to mention though, is you may need a bit more than 120 if you're running an artillery company. And the reason for that is, is when I was running my tanks, I had a lot more concentrated firepower with things like demolisher cannons and PASC and gatekeeper and stuff like that. And I had a much higher volume of fire because each one of those battle cannons or demolisher cannons was getting 2d6 shots, unlike a basilisk, which is like 1d6 shots, for example. And I had higher ballistic skill on all of that. It was with skill 3 or ballistic skill 2 in the case of PASC, and I could overlap in fields of fire and stuff like that as well. So you may need more than that because artillery, it is good and you can't interact with it, 
but it doesn't have that raw firepower that a tank commander has. Now you very well may be able to afford almost two basilisks or, or a manticore and a, and a mortar team or and a mortar team for the price of your tank commander. But that tank commander probably is going to put more firepower out overall. I mean, if you, it's, it's difficult, it depends what you're putting on your tank commander, I suppose. If you're going for like heavy bolt response and stuff, or then they're not, then they're probably not, you know, it's 2d6 battle cannon shots is, is what you're looking at, versus let's say 2d6 basilisk shots. So it'll be like a similar level of firepower maybe, but again, that tank commander is going to have better ballistic skill. And just because your indirect fire doesn't get a minus one to hit like everyone else's indirect fire, doesn't mean that uh, you won't be going over dense terrain. Or something like that so you've got to take that into account so bodies enough bodies for screening I mean essentially you're trading almost lives for time because you're, you're trading enough bodies to buy your artillery enough time to work their magic so that's just something you're gonna to want to take into account there another thing that you you need to think about is really what kind of artillery mix you're gonna be taking because especially with things like armor of contempt now uh, we're starting to see, you know, being able to put, you know, Wyvern with like shock troops isn't as good as it once would have been. Being able, you know, being able to make a Manticore AP3 is quite important. Uh, sadly, we don't have ways of ignoring cover with our artillery very easily. So it's a bit of a tricky one for CERN. But that's just, you know, what I would recommend is you look outside of the Codex and start considering things from Forge World as well. I think you've got things like the Colossus Bombard and the Medusa, uh, which, you know, there is uh, this Forge World artillery, which essentially acts as like a demolisher cannon, which is pretty good. Uh, and that, and, and also you, 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 I would, I once was a quite a big fan of the heavy mortar, but I think with the fact it's only AP1, which I believe it's only AP1, which now Arm of Contempt, sort of messes up and the fact it's damage too which a lot of the time people will be reducing damage it's uh it's not as good so i think when you're looking at artillery full pillow manticores are still fantastic probably still you want to slap two of those in your list straight away you probably then want to take a couple of basilisks this is my sort of thinking here basilisks are good for like sniping so if someone got like a lone character sat on an objective well a couple of basilisks will finish that guy off but more than likely uh what if they got a couple of company veterans sat on an objective yeah basilisk that ap3 that'll certainly help so you've you've got so you want like a couple of manticores because they're just your good take all comers good rocket artillery you want a couple of basilisks and then after that you probably want to start sort of going down the most volume for the least points so you're probably going to want to start thinking about nine mortar teams. And what and I've done a video on the mortar pit already. You're probably going to want, want to start thinking down that route. You, then you're going to want to start thinking, okay, well, I've got my mortar teams. I've got my four artillery vehicles. Realistically, I can probably squeeze in two to three more artillery units that I can hide out of line of sight. Then you're going to be thinking, okay, well, either you're going to want to think about squads of thud guns. The guns are pretty good. Uh, they're not as uh, visible as um, as manticores or basilisks, so you can potentially hide them out of line of sight. And relatively cheap as well. I believe it's about 170 points for a squad of thud guns. Um, so that's something you want, you're going to want to consider. And then, if not the thud guns, you're going to want to maybe think if you and if you if you don't want to go down the Forge World route, you probably want to consider things like uh, wyverns. Or, like I said, if you don't want to, if you are going to go down the Forge World route, maybe rather than the Basilisk, you consider things like I think it's the Medusa carriage or, or um, the other one I mentioned before, the, the Colossus Bombard. Though that kind of route is maybe what you want to go down. But like I said, I'd probably avoid, I'd probably avoid things like the heavy mortars, the basic heavy mortar. Uh, I, at the end of the day, they'll still do you proud. They've still got good strength and stuff like that. I think they're just maybe lacking. Maybe, you know, you need something that's good, that's few shots, but really hits hard like a basilisk or many shots with slightly less AP like the Manticore. Uh, with Knights around the corner as well, 
Knights on the Corner as well. Bear in mind that um, the Thud Guns, the, the Quad Mortar Guns, I believe they're Strength 5, which they'll go into Knights much better as well. And they'll be wounding Marines on 3s. Um, so that they're certainly... I, I think the big winners when you're thinking of putting together your artillery company are going to be your Basilisks, your Manticores, your Thud Guns and your Mortars. And if you can get a good... I mean, you could even consider... You know, three basilisks, three manticores, three uh, thud guns, or three sets of thud guns, maybe even, and three sets of mortars. Although you'll probably start running out of points there. Um, you know, when you think about how much a uh, you know three mortar teams is, that's four hundred and fifty points. Oh no, it's, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's yeah, it's one hundred and fifty points per. No, it's fifty points per mortar. Heavy weapon team, what am I on about? Jesus Christ, 150 points for more weapon team, Jesus. So it's 150 points for your more heavy weapon teams. And then um, you know, your, your three uh, basilisks are going to be 375. And then your manticore is like, what, 155 these days? So uh, when you put those three together alone, you're looking at about 990 points. So then when you start thinking about your thud guns, you'll probably end up... I don't know the exact points cost of thud guns, I'll be honest. Um, but when you start looking at them, like we said, they're about 100 and 170 points for a squad of them. So that's just something you're going to want to take into account. You're going to start running over 1,000 points. It's then a case of, okay, how much infantry can I get if I can't get my heavy quad mortars and all that kind of stuff? So, yeah, it's always 90 points per quad launcher. So it's not 170 it's more like 270 points. Okay, those are quite expensive then. Just checked on Battle Scribe. So if you do 270 times 3, then yeah, you're going to you're certainly going to be starting to run out of points at that point. Yeah. So realistically, I don't think you can include your thud guns as well. So I'd probably what I'd probably do is I'd take I'd take two basilisks. Um I've done three basilisks here, that's why. I'd do I'd do three mortar teams, two basilisks, two manticores and two thud guns and then the rest I'd probably spend on infantry or you know something you know, and if you take infantry squads then at least they've got some you could put a mortar in each one of those infantry squads as well it gives you more artillery you know you could eat that that would probably be quite a potent quite a potent list then looking at maybe 120 infantry plus as much artillery as you can get your hands on that I think would be the way to go so that's just a little, that's the video for today, guys. Just a little bit of a theory, Hammer 1. I know we've, we've, but we've based on some real world experience, based on talking to some players who have been using the artillery uh, sort of style lists, and based on my own experience with that kind of thing. They're the factors you're going to want to take into account when you're building a list. What kind of artillery are you going to take? How much can you hide? And how much can you screen? Those are the big three, summed up. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have, please consider becoming a Patreon for the channel. It's thanks to the Patreons that this channel is still going. And I know I say it every video, but I just want to say massive thank you to the Patreons. Honestly, uh, it's going to be thanks to the Patreons that I'm probably going to be putting together an Imperial Guard Infantry Armour pretty bloody soon. So there we go. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.